Betsy with Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another garden tour. It is currently April, which is basically summer here in my 8B Southern Alabama garden. And a lot of things are blooming. We have all of our summer annuals in the ground, our spring things, our cold weather things, like our ranunculus are just about done. Tulips have been done here for well over a month. Um, lilies, foxgloves, our hydrangeas are either in bloom or in full bud. Wisteria is petering out. Home flowers are about to pop. So, you know, it is beautiful here. And I am very, very, very excited because for the first time in over a year, when we start at the shed, you will see a big change. The garden has been mulched and the area around the raised beds in front of the shed has been mulched. So everything looks really, really pretty right now. The, the mulch, mulch season is always the best season here in the garden. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna start in front of the shed and I will give you a full tour of what is blooming right now in my garden. Let's go. All right, so you can see a few changes. You can also see that we are not 100% done. Still have to put the pea gravel back on this path, but I want to landscape fabric this row as well. This tree drops the worst weeds anywhere in my path. So putting landscape fabric here, we did the whole, if you watch the mulch in front of the shed video, we landscape fabric under all of this mulch. So go watch that if you want to see a crazy transformation. But let's start here on the left because our pots are looking fabulous. So this little trio, we have a snow princess, sweet alyssum, which is doing the best of all the sweet alyssums in my garden right now. And it has drip in here. He is blooming. It's the cutest little blue pot, which I thought would go beautifully with the shed. And then there's a full video on my David Austin roses coming out. But this is Emily Bronte. She is beautiful. I cannot wait for more blooms, but at least there's a few. My dwarf Alberta spruce my pop star hydrangea from last year, you can see is about to go full on bananas. Texas sage and Rose of Sharon back here. My, uh, my rose standards, these are, ooh, just a daddy long legs, but still. These are a beautiful creamy yellow color. They already had a full flush of blooms, but you can see kind of need to pop them up put some new dirt around in there because they are looking funny. I also need to wash this bench. My mom found this uh, saw blade in the garden. So obviously she put it in the most logical place on a chair for someone to sit on. Good job, mom. Rose of Sharon. This Rose of Sharon, the one we grew from our stick from Tractor Supply, is actually looking fabulous. And I have another one to plant over here because planted two sticks and the one right here died. I put a bucket over it to protect it from my lawn maintenance dude, Daniel. And he uh, didn't get removed fast enough, that bucket. So we're gonna go ahead, we'll move, we'll pop in that other Rose of Sharon and then I have another hy Hydrangea Hibiscus that is down in the shade that needs more sun that we're gonna put right here. It is, I wanted it to be Candy Crush. It turned out to be ballet slippers, which is white and pink, and he gets huge, so he's gonna go right here. And then eventually, I think we're gonna do some blueberry bushes and pots here, so I popped this new pot. We'll see. The raised beds. This is the best they've ever looked, and I just put fresh uh, dirt, potting soil, and compost in them last week. I think I need a few more bags to really top these up. So I'm gonna get those this afternoon. 
And then all of these milk jugs where I'm growing seeds need to be planted out. Actually planting out my cucumbers, my watermelons, um, carrots, onions, potatoes, cut flowers. You can see last year's Cosmos have self seeded. I have more Cosmos, I have zinnias, I have gumfrena, I have status, I have a couple other things. But I think about half will be cut flowers and half will be fruits and vegetables. So we're gonna be doing a whole video on all the things I started from seed as well as the plants like the watermelon I grew from seed, cucumber, I'll go get a plant. So we'll be doing that probably in the next week or so because these babies need to get planted. <laughs> but regardless of what's in the raised beds, this area has my current favorite of favorite things. My brand new pink striped tasseled umbrella. I got this on Amazon and it was, uh, it's my favorite of all favorite things. I literally did a mood board two years ago when I first got the shed. Helicopters are flying y'all, I'm sorry. And uh, a much more expensive pink striped umbrella was on that mood board. This one was a third of the cost. Very good. My tulip tree, which I'm going to be planting in this pot and you can see all the, the bricks. We're doing a whole patio under here. So that area will be next month. My actual David Austin Rose. This is the queen of Sweden. She has no blooms on her right now, but she was full of blooms last week. I think I love doing these garden tours. Um, the, the likelihood that every single thing in the garden will be showing out best of bloom on the same day is just not real reality. So I think I'm going to do another couple tours this summer. I always come out when I'm watering and I just take footage of the pretty blooms. So I'll probably do a what's in bloom in my garden over April, maybe May. Um, we'll see because like the Peggy Martin Rose showing out and just show you everything that was in bloom for the month since you missed some of it when I do these garden tours this way. We will walk down to the shed. I want to show you the Cosmos and the Peggy Martin, but before we get down there, let's back up. Let's finish the top of this bed before we head down. So foxgloves that are coming back from last year. I grew these from seed. These are the Camelot mix from Johnny's seed. see there are quite a few blooming and getting ready to bloom so I have quite a few planted all throughout here and on the other side I also have some African or woodland violets that mom let me transplant from her yard my stargazer lilies are putting up so many bloom stalks I cannot wait for those to bloom my uh, Super Tunia Vista bubblegum from last year, starting to grow. I just fertilized everything. My mom, now here's the problem with this spot right here. And it's not a problem, but it's a problem. Uh, when I planted this mom, I thought this peony had completely died. And obviously she did not. <laughs> So eventually those two things cannot live so close together and one will have to move. But for this year, the peony is still small. This peony also lived when I thought she had died. So two of the three peonies are alive. And the third one that was right here that I thought was alive is dead. So that's garden math for you. Little foxgloves, it looks like some zinnias that self-seeded from last year. You caught my garden tour from last month. My verbena, it's always the first thing that shows out in the spring. And she's still full of buds. She will keep going, but uh, she's definitely died back for just a minute. Little Laura Pedlam. My wisterium, wisterium, wisteria is really grown and leafing out this year. I was really, really, really expecting a plethora of buds from her and we did not get it. So I'm not sure why. And I am disappointed. If you watch the bud video, I will show you, but the only blooms I had were right in here. That's all that's left of them.
two, two blooms on this whole plant. So I don't know if I needed to fertilize it earlier in the season or if there's another reason she decided not to bloom. I mean, the leaves are still beautiful. This tree is only half alive, which is why I grew the wisteria on it to have some green there. I do, of course, want the blooms. Why wouldn't you want blooms? But it's still beautiful covering the tree either way. Hoping for blooms next year. Got a little summer crush hydrangea. I need to cut back some of those dead sticks now that she's leafed out. Um, some geraniums that are starting to show up. Hello, beautiful. Looks like more zinnias. I probably need to uh, pull those, seeing as they shouldn't be this close to my bloom flowers. Now the bloom flowers, one, two, three, have come back from last year. And my little daisies here have come back from last year. I've also popped in a bunch of these Silver Falls Diachondra as ground cover throughout the garden. And they are really starting to spread out. And I just want them to sprawl around things. Except for the weed. I should probably take the weed out. This little water pump on my stump, <laughs> tree stump, it's probably on my list of favorite things. My mom actually gave me this for Christmas. And it's a long story. She gave me another one. I liked this one better. She had three. This little pink one. Definitely the winner. <sighs> All right. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to just finish up so we can go down by the shed. This mom that is showing out has a strange divide in the middle. We don't know why, but she's beautiful. And uh, we're going to let her bloom and then cut her back. Hopefully we will still get blooms later in the season. We usually, we have a very, very long growing season, so we should. Oh, look, a Veronica is putting out a bloom. One bloom. The delphiniums are also blooming. Will it need some water? Lily's getting ready. Foxglove starting a foxglove. I love, I just love mixing everything together. My zinnias, these are my, my favorite zinnias of all time and they look a little stressed, but you can see they really just need to be deadheaded and I've been saving them for this tour. Some of these big ones here that were beautiful when I planted them, they just need to be deadheaded. I started deadheading down here and they're already put out new buds. Zinnias are cut and come again flowers. So the more you cut, the more they will bloom, the more they will grow. I've got buds everywhere I already cut. So after this tour, I will come out, we'll cut off all the raggedy blooms, and then they will reward us with even more flowers until this whole area is just covered in beautiful pink zinnias. But let's go ahead, head down to the shed. And then I will show you the rest of that side of the garden when we get there. All right, so down by the shed, we will eventually have a whole little patio under this table and the mulch will come around with our edging to meet here like it does here. And that will be buttoned up. But for now, oh, these are all self-seeded Cosmos from the ones we direct seeded last year. And I was just going to direct seed more of these, so might as well let them go. They are starting to bloom. I need to come in, pinch them all back. You can see, let me see, I pinched a couple of them back. And uh, here, so you can see where I pinched this one back. It has now branched into three, so... The more we pinch, the better they'll do. I'm also going to thin them out. Well, you want a lot. We don't probably need, you know, seven or eight in this spot. So I will dig some up and have a couple places in the garden. I want to transplant them. If I have too many, I can always ask if any friends want them. Now my tulip tree. This is a little Jane Magnolia tree that has beautiful pink tulips like flowers in the spring and you can see I'm in the middle of planting her. I literally put compost in then the tree and then realized I'm out of potting soil. So after this video, 
Jane and I have a date with some potting soil. I'm gonna have to go buy some, but that's okay. Uh, it's hot, so she's probably okay for now, but I wanna get her a good drink for the end of the day so that she's just not sitting out here naked with her root ball exposed, waiting for water and dirt. Seems like a recipe for disaster. My gardenia right in front of my milk jugs is literally covered in buds, which is so exciting because she did not bloom at all last year. And this year, so many. Now we're still working on this area, but I think the edging is gonna come right to here. And then I'm gonna try to maybe do some better shelves here for all my milk jugs so it doesn't look so funky fresh. But, you know, they grow my plants, which is all I really care about. So these little foxgloves were tiny babies when we planted out the rest of the foxgloves. I think these are, I don't know, poppies maybe? Yeah, short and tall poppies. So if you watched the video where you planted out all the milk jugs, um, go back and watch that. I showed you how small these were. They're ready to go now. I mean, they could use, ooh, look at that shadow. That shows you how hot it was. They could use another month, but it's getting so hot. That they'll grow better in the ground. My knockout roses, watch that bloom video whenever I get it up, cause they, they were showing out. Now they're ready. I've been deadheading them, but I just need to trim some of these branches back to make them a little more uniform. Same over here. This knockout rose. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to put footage right now of what this looks like last week. Still beautiful, but this baby was literally loaded with beautiful, beautiful butt blooms. And she will start putting out new buds now, especially once I deadhead her even more. I've done about half, but this is a white hydrangea. And for the first time since I planted her, she has several buds. I'm very excited. On the other hand, my Peggy Martin Rose, Oh, she was even more glorious last week. You can see up here, some of these are still getting ready to bloom. So they start this really fresh kind of dark pink color, and then they fade out to a pale white. But this, this is its second year blooming. I planted it in August of 2022, and now, not even a full season later, she's almost covering the entire fence. Next year, she will be even better. She does appear to have a little foamy fungus kind of stuff right there. That's new. So uh, we will come take care of that somehow. But, you know, look at those buds. Ooh. I'm going to be doing a little grouping of pots here to hide my hose. I still want the hose to be accessible. So I don't necessarily want to plant a whole bunch of stuff here. I had three milk weeds here for the butterflies last year. This one is coming back strong. So I might get a couple more because technically you want a minimum of five to eight plants to truly support monarch butterfly uh, caterpillars when they hatch. So one plant will only get eaten to the ground. It will not actually help the monarchs in a way we truly want them to. But none of the nurseries I've been to have had any. Um, I have seeds, so I might just start some new seeds. They grow pretty quick, but we'll see. I have eucalyptus seeds to plant in this big basket. I want a big eucalyptus. I've got my Peggy Martin here and my beautiful pink climbing rose here. So I don't want another climber in the middle, especially because I have uh, climbers in this butterfly garden. So I think I'm gonna plant a eucalyptus here and I want a whole grouping of pots, more than this, but this is what we're starting with. And then I have a little sweet alyssum for the small one. I think I'm gonna do a butterfly, no, no, a blueberry in this middle pot. You have to have three blueberries ideally for cross 
pollination. So I'm thinking one here, two across the garden. But I don't want just any blueberries. I want a couple different varieties, including one my nursery just got in called Pink Lemonade that has pink berries. I mean, I think I like pink. I obviously need that. Cut the hall where I planted all my clearance plants up front. And this lantana was three plants. When I pulled them out, each plant had three little baby plants in it that was dead, looked dead from last year. I found a smidge of green at the base of that lantana. So I separated them and I planted them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sticks. They are all coming back. So this is going to be just a mass of yellow and pink lantana. My smoke on the mountain bushes. This one is coming back. The other one is not, but it is a pink and green variegated leaf. So if this one doesn't come back, I'll either have to get a replacement or put something else there. Maybe I'll put some more milkweed here. We'll see. And then I think I might put some something up here. I have two sedums. I might put some sedums in front. I don't know. On the other hand, my swallowtail butterfly garden is looking fabulous. We've got the Bordeaux supertunias, parsley and dill, which are food and host plants for the babies. We've got uh, lantana. This is lantana, parsley. This is dill. And then we have our two ruby hyacinth beans, which are climbing vines to climb up these trellises. I grew these from seed. They're both looking fabulous. Lantana coming back from last year and giant weed. Yay weeds. <laughs> I do want to show you a sneak peek if you want to watch my planting of the raised beds next week. Look at this. Forever happy status from Johnny Seeds. Oh, cannot wait to get all these planted out. I'm just going to drop that there for now. I also cut back all of my Dusty Miller and they're finally looking really nice. My Gara is starting to show out. She's covered in these beautiful buds for these beautiful fairy flowers. You can see this one's already kind of done, but most of them are at the beginning stage. So those are pretty. My Bee Balm. This is a prolific self-seeder. I planted one, two plants last year. And this year, so many. None of my moms came back. So I think she's, she's going to thin these out and take some to her house. My cone flowers got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They also self seed. I planted, I think three here. Um, they look like they need some water. <laughs> it's a whole other problem, but you know, we'll get them some. And then we start the swoop. This swoop I am so excited about. So I have one, two, three unplugged pink salvia from Proven Winners and they are beautiful. They get tall, they have big pink blooms. You can see my white salvia. All of these came back from last year. Literally all came back from last year. Then up front, we have Sweet Alyssum. This is the White Knight variety from Proven Winners. I did a whole video on planting Sweet Alyssum from Seed, the White Knight, and the Snow Princess from, da from David Austin. No, from Proven Winners. And how they did in my garden, how they did in my mom's garden, and if they would come back. So here's the thing. They are not guaranteed to come back. So far, the snow princesses all have. Of the white knights, I had one, two, three, and one has come back. This one right here. And she has kind of split into two, which is fine, but weird. And you can see she's starting to bloom. I need to pull this tulip. Ooh, that was easy. 
these I just planted, they were on the clearance rack. Go figure. I also direct seeded quite a bit of sweet alyssum all throughout here and the other side of the path. You can also see that in between the unplugged pink, I have transplanted several cosmos from my cosmos bed already. So when mom and I were in Australia, one of the places we went was the Royal Botanical Gardens. I love seeing other people's gardens, but especially for inspiration. And they had a beautiful place. I will, I will put up a picture on the screen where they had salvia and cosmos all growing kind of wild together. And I would really love it if this corner looked anything like their corner. So I have the cosmos, I have the salvia, I have the corner. We're giving her a try. On the other hand, my, my pride and joy, everything is my favorite thing. Okay guys, just get, get used to it. This is my double watermelon scoop, whatever you call it, comb flower. My mom bought this for me and I love it. These two were on the plant when we got it. They're, they're looking a little spent, but they're okay. There's no reason to take them off. You can see there's more, more blooms starting down in there. And I just, pink salvia, pink cosmos, pink cone flowers. This will be a beautiful area if even half of this continues to come in like it is. Before we move towards the hydrangea, which is like, y'all, don't even. Let's make sure not to forget this half. My oak leaf hydrangea is looking the absolute best she has ever looked in her life. She has the blooms. She has the leaves. There are understory blooms coming out everywhere. And y'all, I just, she is just starting to bloom and I love it. These big white, white flowers. Oh, and then as the seasons turn warmer and then turn to cold, the white turns to dusty pink and then mauve, the leaves turn to red. It is a beautiful, beautiful plant. And best part, not only will she continue to get bigger and better and spread and be beautiful for years to come, but they transplant super easy from runners. This baby, this giant, this giant, giant, giant flower uh, was three sticks from my mom's plant. So we took three sticks from her plant, we brought them over here two years ago and planted them and they've grown into this. Hers were originally three sticks that were just runners from another friend down the street. So I'm just sharing this caring, spread the love, spread the joy, spread the hydrogens. <laughs> My Dianthus experiment so far is doing well. These babies just had a bunch of deadheading. I cut off, you can see, but they're, they're starting with new blooms. Now the ones down in the shade, the experiment is that I had these uh, two years ago and they died fantastically quickly. <laughs> um, so we're trying some in the shade and some in the sun. These are the suns. At the end of the video, I will show you the shades because they're all the way at the other end of the garden. But my silver falls is starting to spread out in this spot. This is a super junior Bordeaux. And unlike his brother in the stuck tank garden, he looks sad, but he's not dead. He's putting out blooms. So there you go see them. This silver falls looks a little sad. More see them. Baby foxgloves. And now the other side of the garden. So we have our foxgloves. We have salvia. These are walking iris. My lavender is looking beautiful. My mums are starting to mum. These are all sweet alyssum from seed. So seed, 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 seed from seed. 
<laughs> all the foxgloves here are all from seed. My hydrangea is just starting to come up. I have two yarrows up in here that are looking beautiful. Some pin cushions I grew from seed. Woodland violets that are transplanted from mom's yard. I need to deadhead them, but my pinch cushion plants here look glorious in front of the lavender. And you can see that they are still putting out new buds everywhere. So they are not done. You just need deadheaded. <sighs> so pretty. And my zinnias. I still love, but y'all, they just need, they need deadheaded. And I've saved that until after this. Because it's better to look at a little spent plants than, uh, deadhead ones. <sighs> All right. Across the path, over the river, through the woods, we have my favorite, one of my two favorite hydrangeas because they're my biggest because they were one of the two first plants I put in the garden. So this is Bloomstruck by Endless Summer. And she is, she is Bloomstruck. And this is the most blooms I've ever seen on her in a single season. But this is, like I said, she and uh, Twist and Shout across the way down there. This is their fourth year in the garden. So they're one of maybe five plants that can claim that. The two hydrangeas, the Nandina, and the crepe myrtles. They were the first things I put in the garden. And they're getting huge. Then I have foxglove. These three I bought already blooming, well, with bloom stalks, because I wanted to enjoy some blooms now. The rest I blew, grew from seed and will start to bloom in the next couple weeks to months. They are all Camelot um, mix flowers. So you know, it's nice to have some succession blooms, but all the ones blooming are either from last year or like these three from the nursery. For some reason, this spot, they don't come back. Everywhere else in my garden, they will come back. This spot, they just die back. And I moved that little dwarf uh, Alberta spruce here and surround it with cabbages in the fall and winter since all my spring interest and summer interest is gone. We have a homestead verbena here that was glorious last year and this year is struggling, but she's still, she's still here. She's just working on it. We have the tiniest cat mint <laughs> ever. Her brother gave up and became a petunia. And so instead of just doing something else. I'm gonna let this cat mint keep working on it. At the end of the season, I will separate another cat mint and put another one here. So for this season, I put two pink bubblegum petunias and they will fill in with our color along with our silver falls up front. Our lamb's ear was beautifully glorious last year and this year she's, like she's here, but she's not as pretty. Later in the season, she'll keep spreading. So we went ahead and put some uh, sweet alyssum I grew from seed. The front of the garden looks very sad, but that's okay. These lantana will eventually take up this whole space. We just have to wait a minute. So they are literally just starting to get their second round of blooms. And once they're happy and established, they will bloom continuously. But I think they got a little bit of shock somehow when I planted them because they haven't had any blooms since I planted them. One white comb flower is coming back. So I need another one for here. My irises have already started blooming this year, which was beautiful. I had a beautiful purple one here. So, yay. And then you might notice here, and around the corner, those are not weeds. They are snapdragons that self-seeded themselves from my porch. They make no sense down there. 
they're beautiful and they're blooming. So Merry Christmas, Snapdragons. You get to live. My porch literally just got planted. So I'll give you a quick overview, but go watch that video if you want to see it. We went with snow drift white petunias for the front pots. This pink verbena is rebounding. Glorious last month. Ooh, weed. And is now getting more, more and more and more. These types of plants, verbena, truffula pink gumfrina, super tunia vista bubblegum. Um, some of those from proven winners that are hardy annuals, meaning they come back every year. Like this bubblegum came back from last year. This verbena came back from last year. They'll come back with a beautiful flush of blooms in the spring. And then you really need to fertilize them almost weekly with a liquid fertilizer to keep them blooming throughout the season. So they store up a lot of energy over the winter and fall, bloom beautifully, and then they need to be fed to continue to perform, which I'm fine with. So I fertilized them last week. I need to get on a schedule for the summer now uh, and start consistently fertilizing them so that they can consistently bloom for me. Before we get too into this section of the garden, to a teeny tiny tiny look at the porch. Ooh. We've got our geraniums, white butterfly bush. We've got a snow princess sweet alyssum that needs cutting back, but I just planted her and I just couldn't do it the first day. My leftover planter <laughs> had a bunch of stuff. It didn't have a spot in the ground and it kind of all went together. So Snow Princess, leftover vinca, geraniums. This is a beautiful daisy from last year that's coming back, along with some white gumfrina that self seeded. Geraniums and another scavola or fan flower. These can get big and wide. I've never grown them before, but I got two and I'm really excited to try them. So I'm going to cut this back probably to here. He will start filling in the front. She will start filling in the front. She will be beautiful. Underneath, we have the lake, which I need to fix. So this is an experiment I'm trying because this guy really just, no matter how low I turn the water, leaks. And I scrubbed the whole porch. porch. So I, I turned it down yesterday, fished out the swimming pool, replanted these guys, and it's a swimming pool again. So obviously, got to turn it down again and refish out the swimming pool. We'll get it to a setting it likes. A fuchsia, which is loving its shady spot with these pink and purple bell-like fairy blooms. I love fuchsia. I just do. The, the blooms that were on it are looking very sad, but she's covered in new buds. So she's not done. And patience things I need to get planted. <laughs> My shade pot. So this has some Rex begonias, some fuchsias, some dusty miller, and some silver falls dichondra. We have geraniums, petunias, and lantana over there. String of tears that has seen better days but will rebound and a lavender that's coming back from last year hmm. and my rose I cannot wait this rose okay she was covered covered in blooms last week last month these are the most beautiful kind of cabbage rose petals they smell beautiful I I love them. And of course, she doesn't have any beautiful ones to show you today, but I got lots of footage, don't worry, when she was really blooming last week. And she's not done. She just needed a break. All right. Now they're impatient. Back to the garden. All right. We've got Silver Falls Dichondra, Super Tunia Bubblegum, 
uh, some quarry lines that are coming back from three years ago and repeating all the way down. I love it. I also apparently have a dripping faucet that is new. Okay. My twist and shout hydrangea. So this is the other hydrangea that has been here for four summers now. The other one, the bloom struck is a mop head hydrangea. This one is a lace cap. And I love how she comes out with these sprawling arms. It's glorious, beautiful, beautiful. The pansies are probably about done. I should probably pull those. But we have a bubble gum coming for, back from last year and a snow princess. So we will let these two get big and beautiful and just take over this whole understory. We've got some more pincushion plants that are coming back from last year. We have some April night salvia, which I am hiding from the bunnies. They were trying their hardest to eat them. I have three under here and I planted two new ones. We have some foxglove. This one's from last year. This one's brand new. She looks very sad. I just watered her, but obviously she didn't like it. Ooh, we have a Barbara Mitchell daylily that I think is, yes, putting out a bud. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, that's exciting cone flowers. These are short cone flowers. So we have the big one, the medium one, and the baby. They were all planted the same day from the same place. So go figure. But uh, my bigger catmints, this one is starting to bloom. Uh, they have these beautiful like lavenderish blue blooms. Cannot wait. Another bubble gum that will fill in a big portion of this area since like the catmint and the cone flowers and the rose don't bloom continuously. Agapanthus, this is an ever twilight agapanthus that blooms all summer. Got this flat of daisies on the Clarence rack and some are looking better than others, but I think these two maybe don't get enough water. So Y'all pop an emitter up here. Laura Pedlum is done blooming for the season, but she's beautiful. A butterfly bush is getting ready to bloom. And my walking iris back here are done blooming. <laughs> oh, so here's my other scovola, our fan flower. And then we've got some mums. Planning to plant some gumfrina here once they are done. This rose, I need to really deadhead all these knockout roses. We've got uh, lantana. So I'm trying a new thing here where I planted six lantanas around this bird bath that are trailing and I want them to create a mat of just purple ground cover flowers around this area. And one of five bubble gums that is apparently coming back go well. We'll love it. Lantana that's coming back from last year. Gara that we just planted. And I will cut it back once it's done blooming. She will bloom again. But hopefully she will get big and bushy and beautiful and really fill in this spot next year. Behind her is an annual pincushion that I am growing from seed. She has salmon pink flowers, as well as some fox gloves. Beautiful, beautiful fox gloves. This was all ranunculus that are now just about spent. Another day lily. This is what the knockout roses look like when they're new and fresh and beautiful. But obviously, these ones in front of the house, like they send out these single arms. So I need to come in and just cut them all back to like leaf level. Go figure. Mystic Spires Blue Salvia. I have one, two, three that I'm hoping will get big and bloom over here. More foxgloves. Had some beautiful yellow iris. 
Butterfly Bush getting ready to go crazy. Vinka. And here is the shade Dianthus. So see, I think these like their spot better. I didn't deadhead these last week, but they have more consistent flowers. A purple Bordeaux Supertunia that is blooming. More foxgloves. This side of the garden is much shadier, so it has different kinds of flowers. We have lots of peonies that are growing down here. Cyclamen, all these little leaves that have these beautiful pink, white, purple blooms. Foxtail ferns, peony. This is the best peony so far. They obviously like it behind this tree. I don't think they're old enough to have blooms yet, but we're icing them in the winter since they need that cold. This is a good example of how hydrangeas do in the shade versus the sun because this bloom struck is literally twins. I planted it same day, same size, same plant as the one that has 8 million buds down there. She's still beautiful. She still does bloom for me, but way more sporadically. All right. Sorry about that. Took a little tumble. <laughs> and I just fell over. We also have, last but not least, our ballet slippers, hibiscus. So this is what I'm talking about. Hibiscus can get huge and bloom and be literally as tall as I am. This baby's been here for three years, and this is the biggest she's ever gotten with two little stalks here. So I am going to move her down into the sun where she can really shine because just about right here where the edge of the house is, this is shade. This is sun, which you can tell because this Vitex is loving it. She was tiny, and now she is growing. I cannot wait. I don't know if she gets enough sun to bloom. This is really only her second year. And she was about this tall last year. So we'll see if she blooms for us. But I planted her here because she can get really big and wide and bushy. And I just want to soften this side of the house since I'm never going to do anything over here. So even if she never blooms, she can just soften this area. That would be great. Probably need to move that though. Either way, I am loving, loving, loving being in the garden right now. I just come out here and sit and enjoy it every single day. I'm loving seeing the blooms, seeing the buds, seeing what's coming. I love that it's all mulched and that the shed is actually starting to look nice so I can enjoy it instead of just be sad and apprehensive of all the work that's to come every time I go over there. There's still, I cannot wait for the hydrangeas to bloom. But you know, there's just so much coming. I hope you enjoyed this tour. If you want to see all the blooms you missed out on this month, like the roses uh, or the iris, make sure to check out the what was in bloom this month video. It will probably say what was blooming in April. I will put that together at the end of the month so you can see everything and enjoy it. I will see you in the next video next garden tour in May. We can see what has changed. We will probably have hydrangea blooms by May. Either way, I'm going to go inside because as you can see from my hair going up, it is humid right now. Super hot, uh, which is not normally this time of day, but had a couple humid afternoons in the last two weeks, which means summer is coming. So I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.